Wildfire 3 Minesweeper Base, Coimbra. In May 1939, four months before the outbreak of World War II, the Admiralty began to requisition vessels suitable to be converted into minesweepers. In June 1939, the first of these began arriving at Shenes, and in November 1939, the HMS Wildfire 2 minesweeper base was established at Coimbra. This would later be renamed HMS St Tudno after the headquarters ship, and finally HMS Wildfire 3. HMS Wildfire 3 Pier went out into the sea from the end of North Road, Coimbra. It went out as far as the All Tide Landing, where it teed off and the short arm of the tee going almost as far as the hard and the long arm going all the way to Flushing Pier, which it joined. The pier was over half a mile long, where minesweepers and destroyers, later landing ships, moored three, four and five abreast. HMS Wildfire 3 shore base consisted of several large wooden huts, 275 feet and 160 feet long. These contained offices and recreational facilities for the sailors of the minesweepers and destroyers. It included a naffy where sailors could buy their cigarettes and a canteen providing food and beverages. There were also brick built navy buildings along the length of Crundles Wharf. Castle class minesweepers were the first to arrive at Wildfire 3 Coimbra. Built during World War I to Admiralty specifications, they were highly seaworthy vessels named and designed after the fishing trawler Raglan Castle. When World War I finished, they were converted into fishing trawlers and sold. Now they were converted back into minesweepers. 3rd of August 1940. Motor minesweeper MMS-1, the very first purpose-built wooden minesweeper with magnetic and acoustic minesweeping capabilities is launched and sent to Wildfire 3 Coimbra. This was quickly followed by other MMSs. 18th of March 1943, British Yard minesweepers began arriving in earnest at Wildfire 3 Coimbra. British Yard minesweepers were built in America and transferred to the Royal Navy under the Lend-Lease program. From September 1939 until May 1940, 80 ships were sunk by enemy mines in the Thames Estuary and off the east coast of England, with the loss of some 600 lives. Ground mines, so called because they lay on the seabed and were dropped by parachute or laid from Schnell boats, Magnetic ground mines sense the magnetic field of a large metal object such as a ship and would explode when the ship was close to it with devastating results. Ground mines were fitted with a variety of delay mechanisms making them difficult to sweep. Timers could be set for up to a 15 day delay. Others had triggers which would not be activated until a certain number of ships had passed over them, e.g. a minesweeper could sweep over the mine 10 times only to have it detonated when the 11th ship passed over it. The shipping lanes in the Thames Estuary and along the east coast had to be swept 15 times to be sure of triggering mines. This was later revised to 20 times. In addition to magnetic mines, the enemy dropped acoustic mines which were detonated by the sound of a ship's engine. Later, the enemy used oyster mines, which were detonated by the pressure of a passing ship. Countermeasures were developed to sweep magnetic and acoustic mines. Minesweepers were fitted with an acoustic hammer on their bow to sweep acoustic mines and with a drum on their stern with double L cables to sweep for magnetic mines. Not only did the minesweepers have the ever-present danger of mines to contend with, they repeatedly came under attack from enemy aircraft. The Luftwaffe considered minesweepers sweeping in straight lines as easy targets, but minesweepers not only swept, they fought back. 40 Messerschmitts BF-109 fighters attacked shipping in the Thames Estuary. Quimbra minesweeper HMS Emilion put up a gallant fight when attacked, 
one of her crew was lost and three were mentioned in dispatches. The minesweeper, HMS Edwardian, was bombed with the loss of three of her crew and three wounded. Stuka dive bombers attacked Queenborough Minesweeping Group 2 in the Thames Estuary. HMS Pyrope was bombed and sank with six of her crew lost. HMS Tamarisk was bombed and sank with seven of her crew lost. Survivors were machine gunned in the sea. Minesweepers always gallantly stood by their stricken sister minesweepers, fighting off the enemy with their three inch and anti-aircraft guns and rescuing survivors. There were over 300 attacks by enemy aircraft in the North Command in the first half of 1941. There would be a further 350 before the end of the year. Shipping in the Thames Estuary and along the East Coast also came under attack from enemy Schnell boats. Schnell boats were fast German torpedo boats. They were called E-boats by the British simply meaning enemy boat. E-boats came out of the darkness to lay mines or to torpedo and strafe vessels in the convoys. Destroyers from Shenes were often engaged in running battles with Schnell boats. The Thames boom, stretching from Sheppey to Shrewbiness, was built with heavy wooden floats to prevent submarines passing below and Schnell boats passing above. The Shenes anti-submarine boom required 14 trawlers and tugs, five lighters, five civilian man launches and employed 400 people. Queenborough minesweepers led the invasion fleet to the D-Day landing beaches. They opened up the port of Antwerp, allowing war materials to arrive right on the front line. They opened up the Dutch ports, allowing food to arrive for the Dutch people who were starving to death. The war did not finish for the minesweepers when Germany surrendered in 1945. There were still tens of thousands of mines to be cleared. Some minesweepers worked into 1947. One by one, as they completed this dangerous task, they returned to Queenborough and other ports to await being sold or returned to America.